Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron for my Stain Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful ship from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is the Wayfarer created by Magic Dog, and reading his little description, he described that this is actually a rebuild of a larger ship using large-scale blocks into a smaller ship, with using the small blocks, of course. So as you can see, this is pretty much a small ship gone wild. We've got a beautifully detailed interior, but first of all, let's have a look around the exterior and just have a look at some of the detailing and ideas he's actually put into this. So looking at this, it's a very traditional sort of shape, but the things that will throw you off from that traditional shape are the wings at the back and how they extend. But first, let's have a quick look at how he's done the glass on the front part of the cockpit. So what's really nice about this is how he's wrapped the glass cockpit around the actual shape of the ship itself following that curve around and then he's tucked it in at various points and at some points where you can't actually tuck anything in he's just created these two reinforcement bars so it kind of deals with that problem of dealing with the corner of the glass but at the same time it looks beautiful and I just can't really resist a good curved cockpit. I don't think anyone can, to be honest. So as we come down on the other side here, we have these little panel areas. And these little panels extend into this wingtip. Something like a Eurofighter would have on it without the engine, of course. And these little thrusters that he's put on, I guess that's what they're supposed to represent. Don't really do anything at all in the world of space engineers, but they're quite detailed. And this particular one stores to, uh, well standard iron based thrusters something that really adds to the weight of this ship though that you'll notice throughout is where he keeps adding these armored blast door blocks at various points increasing the overall weight massively now if you haven't noticed already this ship is a little bit laggy and it is not survival ready that is due to the purpose of just having so many tiny blocks on this build now, as we work our way down the center or the middle of the ship, you'll notice that the lo lower sort of hull extends out to the side, and we've also got these windows. This particular window is looking into the crew deck, so we've got the crew bathroom and various other things that we'll take a look at when we're inside. And if we wrap down a little bit lower, just pay attention to what he's done here with the detailing along this side sort of panel. Very nice, so he's just tucked that in creating a little bit of definition between the two segments and it's also got some thrusters mounted there below the thrusters we have a pair of custom made landing gears out of them blast door blocks once again adding to the weight and in this particular area this ship would struggle traditionally with actually entering into a planet's atmosphere so behind this little door here we have access to added thrust so that added thrust will allow us to descend at a much slower rate and be safer when entering a planet's atmosphere so let's really seal that back up and we'll go back into the space data camera. Now, something to have a look at here is how he's also used a variety of rotor blocks on this top segment as well. Just so you can see exactly what he's done there. We'll tuck inside and go around. And he's also used a number of deconstructed blocks. So that's actually two rotor blocks that have been clipped within each other to add that sort of mechanical look to the design itself. Very nice indeed. I'll turn the light on so you can actually see these areas. If we took a little bit further back into the hull, you can see them landing gears. You can see the whole variety of atmospheric thrusters. Since this ship is so heavy because of all the extra armor sort of door blocks that we've got added to it, it needs a lot of thrust to stop it from just plummeting and exploding into the planet. Look what he's done, he's just took them into that segment and from the side they're barely visible. And I really like how he's done these lights. He's used that smaller triangular block and then he's placed the lights in between the areas so they're actually recessed and protected from the sides. Very nice indeed. So you may notice this ship has slanted wings. And how exactly has he done this? So as we work into this wing area, we've got this like sort of, I'm guessing he's designed this to be some sort of fin for aerodynamics. So you could uh, technically tilt this up and down. And you can see from this point below here that it looks like it's connected on a separate component. So you can see we've got the little rotor there. So this guy can actually move back and forward if it wishes to. Maybe like an air brake or whatnot. I'm not too sure what he intended in the design there. But I'm sure there's lots of possibilities for it. And as we come to the tip of the wind, we've got another little engine thruster. Not doing anything at the front area, but at the back we've got two more thrusters there. And that just curves in to that standard sort of wing setup. And then we have the tail fins at these two sections. Once again, doing nothing, but just adding to the beauty of this design itself. Now, having a look at the engine pack under here, you can see how he's vented this rear section. And we've also got thrusters that are allowing us to move up and down in this upper section, covered by that really nice sort of cowling that is built around it. 
Now, tucking ourselves underneath into the engine section, you can see the large rotor that is used to connect that wing up at various points and give it that angling. And then along the side, you can see we've also got another button to access. So if I just pop myself in here, we'll see if this button actually does anything. I didn't realize there was even a button here, to be honest. So this reverses the thrust. So I'm guessing you can do yourself like a little bit of an engine test or whatnot in this section. So we'll reset that back to normal and have a quick look at the ship. So down at the side here, we actually have the door access. So there's two buttons. We have this one that's triggered now. We'll access the timing block. And we also have this button as well. So we can access it from the lower ground level when it's actually landed. If you can see how that opens up, very simple to board the ship. And then coming around the rear, we have the main sort of thrust pack in the center as well as the cargo bay door. Now at the sides, these cool little brackets are actually landing gears. Once again, that'll show you. I'll take it down to a planet and I'll actually show you this thing trying to land at the best of my ability. I know it's quite difficult. You can see the cool little struts he's added there for the engines as well. Anyway, let's get inside and have a look. So we have two ways of actually entering into this ship. We can use the door that we've just actually thrown down on that side. We've also got the docking port on this side that we're actually going to use instead. So we'll come around this side and we'll enter into the docking port. You'll notice the frame rate starting to drop a little bit just because there's so much going on in here. With that door sealed behind us, it should pressurize. The light should go green, if I believe correct. Or maybe that will do it in a moment. Okay, maybe it's not going to do it at all. We'll just have to open up this door into the next section. Ah, oh, I knew that was a bad idea. I realized the lights didn't go the right color because I'd left this door open on the other side. So there we go. That was really made for the <laughs> atmospheric flight. Now to the rear we have the cargo bay, and just look how he's built this interior. We've got loads of detailing going on here, we've got these different rib, rib sort of sections, we've got these red pipes that are connecting up into reactors up at the top area. Then we've got this clicking computer, you can see how it's doing various different processes, we've got large reactors, rocket launches and whatnot, and then these little components here that I believe are rotors that have been broke down, broken down, or searchlights even. And you can see it says high voltage on the side. Just a little bit of detail. And you wouldn't naturally think that that was a searchlight. So let's open up this next door and go into the cargo bay. So the cargo bay itself is extremely simple. You can see the center access behind. We've got a camera up in the top corner there that we can access from the cockpit. We've got the vents and once again, more beautiful ceiling detailing. Now I believe they're rocket pods that have been cut down and we've just got three cargo containers on that side as well as four smaller cargo containers and a number of remote control blocks that don't really serve a point as remote control but more as detailing. So as we come to this back door, I believe it opens somehow, but I think you're going to have to open it from the actual cockpit itself. I thought there'd be a button in here. Maybe maybe there isn't. We'll have to head to the cockpit and see what's going up in that area. So we'll use the automatic door function, and we'll head up this beautifully designed staircase. Once again, using them heavily armored blocks, we've got like a staircase rail on both sides. These really add the weight. Under there, we've got some timer blocks by the look of it. We pop up into the area. We've got the cockpit on the left. We've got the crew quarters on this side. So let's have a look in the crew quarters first. So you're met with this beautiful little glass corridor that I really like. I don't like the idea of having these windows though in the bathroom. I could just imagine a passing spaceship goes past as you're trying to use the toilet. We've got a little metal bin there as well. And then we've got the sink on this side and a little mirror out there. Yeah, then windows need to be tinted most definitely because I just wouldn't feel comfortable using the toilet elsewhere. So we're heading a little bit further down the corridor. We've got this little segment. That's a corridor that's blocked up, maybe just like a storage component. But have a look there. He's got built this sort of venting cargo container system up in the ceiling, giving it a bit of detailing. We've got the captain's quarters. Once again, there's no door on the captain's quarters, so it isn't that private. I could imagine doing my, my video vlog or whatever I need to do for the day. And the crew's like, hey, how dare you make a report on me about that? And you've also got the bed. And these beds have become quite popular in a lot of builds where they turn a TV LCD upside down and build the blocks on top. And we've got a little bit of light in there, so as you lie down and enjoy your night. And at various components, just look at the detailing of the actual corridor itself here. You've got this ledge that goes across there, and you've got lights at various components. Just adding them bits that stick out and add a little bit more detailing on is just amazing. So we've got the cruise quarters. So the crew quarters features a nice little table, so you can dine with two. And what was quite interesting about this, it looks like maybe, maybe you can only dine with two because the other two have got to be on the bridge at all times, because there is four beds. Unless you plan on taking, I wonder what this is, this is like some sort of journal machine, I can imagine making, maybe it's just like a little sink for the crew, I don't particularly know, but the crew quarters are not too bad, not too shabby, I don't mind travelling a little bit of distance on the ship. Anyway, let's head to the bridge. So heading to the bridge, or the cockpit, as it's labelled up above there, 
you can have the beautiful iris opening door and we have a total of five seats we've got two seats that show the speed and oxygen tanks speed and oxygen tanks once again there atmospheric just look at the detailing of this place though we've got these little stilts for the various different positions in the chairs and we have the no natural gravity. We have just got so much information for you to look around when you're actually piloting the ship. And you can see how he's reversed the monitors around at the bottom there to act as pedals. Just a beautiful little bit of detailing going on here. You can see the reverse monitor there to actually act as a bracket for them other cockpits. There is a few modifications on this ship, but it does look beautiful. Let's have a quick go at the acceleration. So acceleration's quite good. We're going to turn it into a little bit of roll, see if anything breaks off. Okay, it's turning well. Yeah, it's quite, it seems quite maneuverable for what I said in the actual description. So we'll bring it down here. And what I'll actually do is copy and paste it down so we don't have to do the whole atmospheric descent. And we'll just see how well it is. We've got various timer blocks as well. So let's have a quick glance at them. Uh, power up, power down, uh, timer reverse engine thrust, um, atmospheric shield open and close. And we've got the camera's front view, hangar camera. Let's actually have a look at the hangar camera. So the hangar camera's five, so that's that. That's the reverse view. Um, we've also got number seven. What's number seven doing? Boarding block uh, opens and triggers the ramp. So let's slow ourselves down a little bit here. Uh, make sure our initial dampeners are on. So the slowing speed looks actually really bad. We've not got too many thrusters on the front itself, so you'd really have to repair for slowing down in space. You'd, I think you'd have to stop a good few hundred, well, not hundred kilometers, a few kilometers out, or else you'd risk crashing into or going right past whatever you're trying to dock with. Anyway, I'll take this down to the planetary level and we'll have a look at it. So as I said, I have found a lovely little patch near this desert where I actually want to put the ship down. We're going to actually bring out our landing gears first. So I'll just bring out that little camera there. We're going to press number nine. That should fold out the landing gears. Oh, look at them. That's very nice indeed. Let's bring them in and out once again. Well, look at that front one fold away. Oh, very slick indeed. So, oh God, please don't say I've broken landing gears because I need to land. Okay, landing gears are down, back landing gears are down, and we're coming in for a very soft landing. Let's just check this out. Fingers crossed everything goes well, and it'll be able to support the weight of the actual ship itself. Coming into the ground, and we have touchdown, so we can actually power off systems. So I believe that's one. Oh, no, that's not. That's that's thrust. Oh, God. The landing gears have come out. Everything's gone wrong. Um, okay, maybe just cut power. Okay, so I broke it. I managed to I've managed to land it, but I misread the controls, so I've crashed it. That was power up. I accidentally pressed. Um, I was looking for the doors, <laughs> so don't make that mistake. So holding number eight, we have the doors closed. Let's see if we can actually open these doors up. Maybe put that power down. Oh god. Okay, the doors are opening, but we're still going forward because Aaron should have read the controls. Oh, it's a ramp that folds down. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and it extends as well. Only if we weren't being powered forward into a tree. Um, let's have a quick look. I've pressed the power down. Uh, reverse thrust, maybe three. Oh, God, no, that just puts me in vertical takeoff mode. Oh, God, now I'm in vertical takeoff mode. And this is this. Okay, okay. Oh, no, it doesn't even. It's reversed the thrust, so my thrusters go the opposite way, and I've hit a tree. Oh, God, it's all gone wrong. Anyway, now everything's gone wrong, and I've managed to crash the ship. It is a beautiful little creation. I recommend that you check it out in the description below. Have a look at some of its features and I will see you next time.